Calculus of variations is a field of mathematical analysis that uses variations, which are small changes in functions and functionals, to find maxima and minima of functionals, mappings from a set of functions to the real numbers. Functionals are often expressed as definite integrals involving functions and the derivatives. Functions that maximize or minimize functionals may be found using the Euler-Lagrange equation of the calculus of variations. A simple example of such a problem is to find the curve of shortest length connecting two points. If there are no constraints, the solution is obviously a straight line between the points. However, if the curve is constrained to lie on a surface in space, then the solution is less obvious, and possibly many solutions may exist. Such solutions are known as geodesics. A related problem is posed by Fermat's principle, light follows the path of shortest optical length connecting two points, where the optical length depends upon the material of the medium. One corresponding concept in mechanics is the principle of least action. Many important problems involve functions of several variables. Solutions of boundary value problems for the Laplace equation satisfy the Dirichlet principle. Plato's problem requires finding a surface of minimal area that spans a given contour in space. A solution can often be found by dipping a frame in a solution of soap suds. Although such experiments are relatively easy to perform, their mathematical interpretation is far from simple, there may be more than one locally minimizing surface, and they may have non-trivial topology. History The calculus of variations may be said to begin with Newton's minimal resistance problem in 1687, followed by the Brachistochrone curve problem raised by Johann Bernoulli 1696. It immediately occupied the attention of Jacob Bernoulli and the Marquis de l'Hôpital, but Leonard Euler first elaborated the subject, beginning in 1733. Lagrange was influenced by Euler's work to contribute significantly to the theory. After Euler saw the 1755 work of the 19-year-old Lagrange, Euler dropped his own partly geometric approach in favor of Lagrange's purely analytic approach and renamed the subject the Calculus of Variations in his 1756 lecture Elementa Calculi Variationum, Legendre, 1786, laid down a method, not entirely satisfactory, for the discrimination of maxima and minima. Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz also gave some early attention to the subject. To this discrimination Vincenzo Brunacci 1810, Carl Friedrich Gauss 1829, Simeon Poisson 1831, Mikhail Ostrogradsky 1834, and Carl Jacobi 1837, have been among the contributors. An important general work is that of Saris 1842, which was condensed and improved by Cauchy 1844. Other valuable treatises and memoirs have been written by Strauch 1849, Gellert 1850, Otto Hess 1857, Alfred Klepsch 1858, and Karl 1885, but perhaps the most important work of the century is that of Weierstrass. His celebrated course on the theory is epoch-making, and it may be asserted that he was the first to place it on a firm and unquestionable foundation. The 20th and the 23rd Hilbert problem published in 1900 encouraged further development. In the 20th century, David Hilbert, Emmy Noether, Leonida Tonelli, Henry Leibs Gay, and Jacques Hadamard, among others, made significant contributions. Marston Moore supplied calculus of variations in what is now called Moore's theory. Lev Pontryagin, Ralph Rockefeller, and F. H. Clark developed new mathematical tools for the calculus of variations in optimal control theory. The dynamic programming of Richard Bellman is an alternative to the calculus of variations. Extrema 
The calculus of variations is concerned with the maxima or minima collectively called extrema of functionals. A functional maps functions to scalars, so functionals have been described as functions of functions. Functionals have extrema with respect to the elements y of a given function space defined over a given domain. A functional j y is said to have an extremum at the function f if delta j equals j y minus j f has the same sign for all y in an arbitrarily small neighborhood of f. The function f is called an extremal function or extremal. The extremum j f is called a local maximum if delta j zero everywhere in an arbitrarily small neighborhood of f, and a local minimum if delta j zero there. For a function space of continuous functions, extrema of corresponding functionals are called weak extrema or strong extrema, depending on whether the first derivatives of the continuous functions are respectively all continuous or not. Both strong and weak extrema of functionals are for a space of continuous functions, but weak extrema have the additional requirement that the first derivatives of the functions in the space be continuous. Thus a strong extremum is also a weak extremum, but the converse may not hold. Finding strong extrema is more difficult than finding weak extrema. An example of a necessary condition that is used for finding weak extrema is the Euler-Lagrange equation. Euler-Lagrange <laughs> equation equals finding the extrema of functionals is similar to finding the maxima and minima of functions the maxima and minima of a function may be located by finding the points where its derivative vanishes ie is equal to 0 the extrema of functionals may be obtained by finding functions where the functional derivative is equal to 0 this leads to solving the associated Euler Lagrange equation. Consider the functional j y equals x 1 x 2 l x y x y x d x Display style j y equals int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two l x y x y x dx, where x one x two are constants, y x is twice continuously differentiable, y x equals dy dx, l x y x y x is twice continuously differentiable with respect to its arguments x y y if the functional j y attains a local minimum at f and eta x is an arbitrary function that has at least one derivative and vanishes at the endpoints x1 and x2 then for any number epsilon close to 0 j f j f plus Epsilon eta display style j f l e q j f plus ver epsilon eta. The term e is called the variation of the function f and is denoted by delta f. Substituting f plus e for y in the functional j y, the result is a function of epsilon phi epsilon equals j f plus epsilon eta display style phi ver epsilon equals j f plus ver epsilon eta since the functional j y has a minimum for y topic f the function phi epsilon has a minimum at epsilon zero and thus Phi zero d phi d epsilon epsilon equals zero equals 
x one x two d l d epsilon epsilon equals zero d x equals zero Display style phi zero equivalent left frac d phi d var epsilon right underscore var epsilon equals zero equals int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two left frac d l d var epsilon right underscore var epsilon equals zero d x equals zero. Taking the total derivative of l x y y where y Topic F plus epsilon eta and y. F plus epsilon eta are functions of epsilon, but x is not d l d epsilon equals l y d y d epsilon plus L Y D Y D Epsilon Display style frac D L D var epsilon equals frac partial L partial Y frac D Y D var epsilon plus frac partial L partial Y frac D Y D var epsilon and since D Y D epsilon Topic Eta and dy, d epsilon Eta D L D Epsilon equals L Y Eta plus L Y Eta Display style frac d l d var epsilon equals frac partial l partial y eta plus frac partial l partial y eta. Therefore, x one x two d l d epsilon epsilon equals Zero D X equals X one X two L F Eta plus L F Eta D X equals X one x two L F eta plus D D x L F eta minus eta D D x L F D X equals X one X two L F Ata minus Ata D D X L F DX plus LF eta x one by two display style begin aligned int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two left frac DL D var epsilon right underscore var epsilon equals zero DX and equals int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two left frac partial L partial F eta plus frac partial L partial F eta right DX and equals int 
underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two left frac partial L partial F eta plus frac D DX left frac partial L partial F eta right eta frac D DX frac partial L partial F right DX and equals int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two left frac partial L partial F eta eta frac D DX frac partial L partial F right DX plus left frac partial L partial F eta right underscore X underscore one carrot X underscore two end aligned where L X Y Y L X F F when epsilon topic zero and we have used integration by parts the last term vanishes because eta zero at x one and x two by definition. Also, as previously mentioned, the left side of the equation is zero, so that x one x two eta x l f minus D D X L F D X equals zero Display style int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two eta x left frac partial L partial F frac D DX frac partial L partial F right DX equals zero According to the fundamental lemma of calculus of variations, the part of the integrand in parentheses is zero, i.e., L F minus D D X L F equals zero. Display style frac partial L partial F frac D DX frac partial L partial F equals zero, which is called the Euler Lagrange equation. The left hand side of this equation is called the functional derivative of JF and is denoted delta J delta F X. In general, this gives a second order ordinary differential equation which can be solved to obtain the extremal function F X. The Euler-Lagrange equation is a necessary, but not sufficient, condition for an extremum J f. A sufficient condition for a minimum is given in the section variations and sufficient condition for a minimum. Topic. Example In order to illustrate this process, consider the problem of finding the extremal function y equals f x, which is the shortest curve that connects two points x1, y1, and x2, y2. The arc length of the curve is given by a y equals x1 x2 1 plus y x 2 d x display style a y equals int underscore x underscore 1 carrot x underscore 2 sqrt 1 plus y x carrot 2 dx with y x equals d y D X Y one equals F X one Y two equals F X two Display style y x equals frac d y d x y underscore one equals f x underscore one y underscore two equals f x underscore two. 
The Euler-Lagrange equation will now be used to find the extremal function f x that minimizes the functional a y l f minus d d x l f equals zero. Display style frac partial l partial f frac d dx frac partial l partial f equals zero with l equals one plus f x two. Display style l equals sqrt one plus f x caret two. Since f does not appear explicitly in L, the first term in the Euler-Lagrange equation vanishes for all f x, and thus d d x L f equals zero. Display style frac d dx frac partial L partial f equals zero. Substituting for L and taking the derivative d d x f x one plus f x two equals zero. Display style frac d dx frac f x sqrt one plus f x caret two equals zero. Thus, f x one plus f x two equals c. Display style frac f x sqrt one plus f x caret two equals c for some constant c. Then f x two one plus f x two equals c two. Display style frac f x caret two one plus f x caret two equals c caret two, where zero c two one. Display style zero leq c caret two. Solving, we get f x two equals c two one minus c two. Display style f x caret two equals frac c caret two one c caret two, which implies that f x equals m display style f x equals m is a constant and therefore that the shortest curve that connects two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 is f x equals m x plus b with m equals y two minus y one x two minus x one and b equals x two y one minus x one y two x two minus x one Display style f x equals m x plus b q quad text with m equals frac y underscore two y underscore one x underscore two x underscore one quad text and quad b equals frac x underscore two y underscore one x underscore one y underscore two x underscore two x underscore one 
and we have thus found the extremal function f x that minimizes the functional a y so that a f is a minimum. Note that y equals f x is the equation for a straight line. In other words, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Equals. Topic: Beltrami identity. Topic. In physics problems it frequently turns out that L x 0, i.e., the integrand only depends on x through y x, y x, but x does not appear separately. In that case, the Euler-Lagrange equation can be simplified to the Beltrami identity L minus f L F equals C display style L F frac partial L partial F equals C, where C is a constant. The left-hand side is the legendary transformation of L with respect to F. The intuition behind this result is that if the variable x is actually time, then the statement L x equals zero implies that the Lagrangian is time independent. By Noether's theorem, there is an associated conserved quantity, the Hamiltonian, which often coincides with the energy of the system. This is minus the constant in Beltrami's identity. Equals. <laughs> Topic: Du Bois-Raymond's theorem. Equals. The discussion thus far has assumed that extremal functions possess two continuous derivatives, although the existence of the integral j requires only first derivatives of trial functions. The condition that the first variation vanishes at an extremal may be regarded as a weak form of the Euler-Lagrange equation. The theorem of Du Bois-Raymond asserts that this weak form implies the strong form. If L has continuous first and second derivatives with respect to all of its arguments, and if 2 L F 2 does not equal 0 display style frac partial carrot 2 L partial F carrot 2 neq 0, then F display style F has two continuous derivatives, and it satisfies the Euler-Lagrange equation. Topic: <laughs> Lavrentiev phenomenon. Hilbert was the first to give good conditions for the Euler-Lagrange equations to give a stationary solution. Within a convex area and a positive thrice differentiable Lagrangian the solutions are composed of a countable collection of sections that either go along the boundary or satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equations in the interior. However Lavrentiev in 1926 showed that there are circumstances where there is no optimum solution but one can be approached arbitrarily closely by increasing numbers of sections. For instance the following L T X X equals X three minus T two X six display style L T X X equals X carrot three T carrot two X carrot six X Zero equals zero x one equals one. Display style x zero equals zero x one equals one. Here a zigzag path gives a better solution than any smooth path, and increasing the number of sections improves the solution. Topic: 
functions of several variables For example, if phi x, y denotes the displacement of a membrane above the domain D in the x, y plane, then its potential energy is proportional to its surface area U phi equals D 1 plus phi phi D x D Y display style u vafi equals i i n t underscore d s q r t one plus nabla vafi c d o t nabla vafi d x d y Plato's problem consists of finding a function that minimizes the surface area while assuming prescribed values on the boundary of d. The solutions are called minimal surfaces. The Euler-Lagrange equation for this problem is nonlinear. Phi x x one plus phi y two plus phi y y one plus phi x two minus two Phi x phi y phi x y equals zero. Display style vafi underscore x x one plus vafi underscore y carrot two plus vafi underscore y y one plus vafi underscore x carrot two minus two vafi underscore x vafi underscore y vafi underscore x y equals zero. See Courant, 1950, for details. Topic. Dirichlet's principle It is often sufficient to consider only small displacements of the membrane, whose energy difference from no displacement is approximated by V phi equals 1 2 d phi phi d x d y display style v va phi equals frac 1 2 i i n t underscore d nabla va phi c d o t nabla va phi d x d y the functional v is to be minimized among all trial functions phi that assume prescribed values on the boundary of d if u is the minimizing function and v is an arbitrary smooth function that vanishes on the boundary of d, then the first variation of v u plus epsilon v display style v u plus for epsilon v must vanish d d epsilon v u plus epsilon v epsilon equals 0 equals d u v d x d y equals 0 Display style frac d d var epsilon v u plus var epsilon v underscore var epsilon equals zero equals i i n t underscore d nabla u c d o t nabla v d x d y equals zero. Provided that u has two derivatives, we may apply the divergence theorem to obtain d v u d x d y equals d u v plus v u 
d x d y equals c v u n d s display style i i n t underscore d nabla c d o t v nabla u d x d y equals i i n t underscore d nabla u c d o t nabla v plus v nabla c d o t nabla u d x d y equals int underscore c v frac partial u partial n d s where c is the boundary of d s is arc length along c and u n display style partial u partial n is the normal derivative of u on c since v vanishes on c and the first variation vanishes the result is d v u d x d y equals 0 Display style i i n t underscore d v nabla c d o t nabla u d x d y equals zero. For all smooth functions v that vanish on the boundary of d, the proof for the case of one-dimensional integrals may be adapted to this case to show that u equals zero. Display style nabla c d o t nabla u equals zero. Indeed, the difficulty with this reasoning is the assumption that the minimizing function u must have two derivatives. Riemann argued that the existence of a smooth minimizing function was assured by the connection with the physical problem. Membranes do indeed assume configurations with minimal potential energy. Riemann named this idea the Dirichlet principle in honor of his teacher Peter Gustav Lejeune Dirichlet. However, Weierstrass gave an example of a variational problem with no solution. Minimize W phi equals minus one one x phi two d x Display style w varphi equals int underscore minus one carrot one x varphi carrot two dx. Among all functions phi that satisfy phi minus one equals minus one. Display style varphi minus one equals minus one and phi. One equals one. Display style var phi one equals one. W display style W can be made arbitrarily small by choosing piecewise linear functions that make a transition between minus one and one in a small neighborhood of the origin. However, there is no function that makes W equals Zero. Display style w equals zero. Eventually, it was shown that Dirichlet's principle is valid, but it requires a sophisticated application of the regularity theory for elliptic partial differential equations. See Jost and Lee Jost, 1998. Topic: Generalization to other boundary value problems. A more general expression for the potential energy of a membrane is V phi equals d one two phi phi plus f x y phi d x d y plus c 1 2 sigma s phi 2 plus 
g s phi d s display style v buffy equals i i n t underscore d left frac one two nabla buffy c d o t nabla buffy plus f x y buffy right d x d y plus int underscore c left frac one two sigma s buffy carrot two plus g s buffy right d s this corresponds to an external force density f x y display style f x y in d an external force g s display style g s on the boundary c and elastic forces with modulus sigma s display style sigma s acting on c the function that minimizes the potential energy with no restriction on its boundary values will be denoted by u provided that f and g are continuous regularity theory implies that the minimizing function u will have two derivatives in taking the first variation no boundary condition need be imposed on the increment v the first variation of v u plus epsilon v display style v u plus for epsilon v is given by d u v plus f v d x d y plus c Sigma U V plus G V D S equals zero. Display style I I N T underscore D left Nabla U C D O T Nabla V plus F V right D X D Y plus int underscore C left Sigma U V plus G V right D S equals zero. If we apply the divergence theorem, the result is D minus V U plus V F D X D Y plus C V U N plus Sigma U plus G D S equals zero Display style I I N T underscore D left V Nabla C D O T Nabla U plus V F right D X D Y plus int underscore C V left frac partial U partial N plus Sigma U plus G right D S equals zero. If we first set V equals zero on C, the boundary integral vanishes, and we conclude as before that minus U plus f equals 0 display style nabla c d o t nabla u plus f equals 0 indeed then if we allow v to assume arbitrary boundary values this implies that you must satisfy the boundary condition u n plus sigma u plus g equals 0 display style frac partial u partial n plus sigma u plus g equals 0 on c note that this boundary condition is a consequence of the minimizing property of u it is not imposed beforehand such conditions are called natural boundary conditions the preceding reasoning is not valid if Sigma display style sigma vanishes identically on C. 
In such a case, we could allow a trial function phi c display style equivalent c where c is a constant. For such a trial function v c equals c d f d x d y plus c g d s Display style v c equals c left i i n t underscore d f d x d y plus int underscore c g d s right. By appropriate choice of c, v can assume any value unless the quantity inside the brackets vanishes. Therefore, the variational problem is meaningless unless d f d x d y plus c g d s equals 0 display style i i n t underscore d f d x d y plus int underscore c g d s equals 0 this condition implies that net external forces on the system are in equilibrium if these forces are in equilibrium, then the variational problem has a solution, but it is not unique, since an arbitrary constant may be added. Further details and examples are in Courant and Hilbert 1953. Eigenvalue problems Both one-dimensional and multi-dimensional eigenvalue problems can be formulated as variational problems. Topic: <laughs> Sturm-Liouville problems. The Sturm-Liouville eigenvalue problem involves a general quadratic form Q phi equals x 1 x 2 p x phi x 2 plus q x phi x 2 d x Display style q vafi equals int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two left p x vafi x carrot two plus q x vafi x carrot two right dx where phi display style vafi is restricted to functions that satisfy the boundary conditions phi x one equals zero phi x two equals zero display style vafi x underscore one equals zero quad vafi x underscore two equals zero let r be a normalization integral r phi equals x 1 x 2 r x phi x 2 d x Display style r vafi equals int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two r x vafi x carrot two dx. The functions p x display style p x and r x display style r x are required to be everywhere positive and bounded away from zero. 
The primary variational problem is to minimize the ratio Q, R among all phi satisfying the endpoint conditions. It is shown below that the Euler Lagrange equation for the minimizing U is minus P U plus Q U minus Lambda R U equals zero Display style Pu plus Chu Lambda Ru equals zero where lambda is the quotient lambda equals q u r u display style lambda equals frac q u r u it can be shown see gelfand and foman 1963 that the minimizing u has two derivatives and satisfies the euler lagrange equation the associated lambda will be denoted by lambda one. Display style lambda underscore one. It is the lowest eigenvalue for this equation and boundary conditions. The associated minimizing function will be denoted by u one x. Display style u underscore one x. This variational characterization of eigenvalues leads to the Rayleigh Ritz method. Choose an approximating U as a linear combination of basis functions, for example trigonometric functions, and carry out a finite dimensional minimization among such linear combinations. This method is often surprisingly accurate. The next smallest eigenvalue and eigenfunction can be obtained by minimizing Q under the additional constraint. X one X two R X U one X Phi X D X equals zero Display style int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two R x U underscore one x Vafi x DX equals zero. This procedure can be extended to obtain the complete sequence of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions for the problem. The variational problem also applies to more general boundary conditions. Instead of requiring that phi vanish at the endpoints, we may not impose any condition at the endpoints, and set q phi equals x 1 x 2 p x phi x 2 plus q x phi x 2 d x plus a 1 phi x 1 2 plus a 2 phi x 2 Two Display style Q Vafi equals int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two left P x Vafi x carrot two plus Q x Vafi x carrot two right DX plus A underscore one Vafi x underscore one carrot two plus A underscore two Vafi x underscore two carrot two where one display style underscore one and a two display style underscore two are arbitrary. If we set phi equals u plus epsilon v display style var phi equals u plus var epsilon v 
the first variation for the ratio q r display style q r is v 1 equals 2 r u x 1 x 2 p x u x v x plus q x u x v x minus lambda u x v x d x plus f 1 u x 1 v x 1 plus f 2 u x 2 v x 2 Display style V underscore one equals frac two R U left int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two left P x U x V x plus Q x U x V x lambda U x V x right DX plus A underscore one U x underscore one V x underscore one plus A underscore two U x underscore two V x underscore two right where lambda is given by the ratio q u r u display style q u r u as previously after integration by parts r u 2 v 1 equals x 1 x 2 v x minus p u plus q u minus lambda r u d x plus V x one minus P x one U x one plus F one U x one plus V x two x two u x two plus a two u x two display style frac r u two v underscore one equals int underscore x underscore one carrot x underscore two v x left poo plus two lambda root right dx plus v x underscore one p x underscore one u x underscore one plus a underscore one u x underscore one plus v x underscore two p x underscore two u x underscore two plus a underscore two U x underscore two. If we first require that v vanish at the endpoints, the first variation will vanish for all such v only if minus p u plus q u minus lambda r u equals zero for x one x x two. Display style pu plus chu lambda ru equals zero quad h box for quad x underscore one. If u satisfies this condition, then the first variation will vanish for arbitrary v only if minus p x 1 u x 1 plus f 1 u x 1 equals 
zero and p x two u x two plus f two u x two equals zero Display style P x underscore one U x underscore one plus A underscore one U x underscore one equals zero quad H box and quad P x underscore two U x underscore two plus A underscore two U x underscore two equals zero. These latter conditions are the natural boundary conditions for this problem, since they are not imposed on trial functions for the minimization, but are instead a consequence of the minimization. Topic: <laughs> Eigenvalue problems in several dimensions. Eigenvalue problems in higher dimensions are defined in analogy with the one-dimensional case. For example, given a domain D with boundary B in three dimensions we may define Q phi equals D P X phi phi plus Q X phi two D X D Y D Z plus B Sigma S phi two D S Display style q va phi equals i i i n t underscore d p x nabla va phi c d o t nabla va phi plus q x va phi carrot two d x d y d z plus i i n t underscore b sigma s va phi carrot two d s and r phi equals d r X Phi X two D X D Y D Z Display style R va phi equals I I I N T underscore D R X va phi X carrot two D X D Y D Z let u be the function that minimizes the quotient q phi r phi display style q va phi r va phi with no condition prescribed on the boundary b the euler lagrange equation satisfied by u is minus p x u plus Q X U minus Lambda R X U equals zero. Display style Nabla C D O T P X Nabla U plus Q X U Lambda R X U equals zero. Where Lambda equals q u r u display style lambda equals frac q u r u the minimizing u must also satisfy the natural boundary condition p s u n plus sigma s U equals zero. Display style p s frac partial u partial n plus sigma s u equals zero on the boundary b. 
This result depends upon the regularity theory for elliptic partial differential equations, see Jost and Lee Jost for details. Many extensions, including completeness results, asymptotic properties of the eigenvalues and results concerning the nodes of the eigenfunctions are in Courant and Hilbert 1953. Applications Some applications of the calculus of variations include The derivation of the catenary shape Newton's minimal resistance problem The brachistochrone problem Isoperimetric problems Geodesics on surfaces Minimal surfaces and plateaus problem Optimal control. Topic: Fermat's principle. Fermat's principle states that light takes a path that locally minimizes the optical length between its endpoints. If the x coordinate is chosen as the parameter along the path, and y equals f x display style y equals fx along the path then the optical length is given by a f equals x equals x 0 x 1 n x f x 1 plus f x 2 d x display style a f equals int underscore x equals x underscore 0 caret x underscore 1 n x f x s q r t 1 plus f x caret 2 d x where the refractive index n x y display style n x y depends upon the material if we try f x equals f 0 x plus epsilon f 1 x Display style f x equals f underscore zero x plus epsilon f underscore one x. Then the first variation of a, the derivative of a with respect to epsilon, is delta a f zero f one equals x equals x. 0 x 1 n x f 0 f 0 x f 1 x 1 plus f 0 x 2 plus n y x f 0 f 1 1 plus f 0 x 2 d x Display style delta a f underscore zero f underscore one equals int underscore x equals x underscore zero carrot x underscore one left frac n x f underscore zero f underscore zero x f underscore one x sqrt one plus f underscore zero x carrot two plus n underscore y x f underscore zero f underscore one sqrt one plus f underscore 0 x 2 right dx. 
After integration by parts of the first term within brackets, we obtain the Euler-Lagrange equation minus d d x n x f zero f zero one plus f zero two plus n y x f zero one plus f zero x two equals zero Display style frac D DX left frac N X F underscore zero F underscore zero SQRT one plus F underscore zero carrot two right plus N underscore Y X F underscore zero SQRT one plus F underscore zero X carrot two equals zero. The light rays may be determined by integrating this equation. This formalism is used in the context of Lagrangian optics and Hamiltonian optics. Topic Snell's law There is a discontinuity of the refractive index when light enters or leaves a lens. Let n x y equals n minus if x zero display style n x y equals n underscore quad h box if quad x n x y equals n plus if x greater than zero display style n x y equals n underscore plus quad h box if quad x greater than zero where n minus display style n underscore and n plus display style n underscore plus are constants. Then the Euler-Lagrange equation holds as before in the region where x0, and in fact the path is a straight line there, since the refractive index is constant. At the x equals 0, f must be continuous, but f may be discontinuous. After integration by parts in the separate regions and using the Euler-Lagrange equations, the first variation takes the form delta a f Zero F one equals F one zero N minus F zero zero minus one plus F zero zero minus Two minus N plus F zero zero plus one plus F zero zero plus two Display style delta a f underscore zero f underscore one equals f underscore one zero left n underscore frac f underscore zero zero underscore sqrt one plus f underscore zero zero underscore carrot two n underscore plus frac f underscore zero zero underscore plus sqrt one plus f underscore zero zero underscore plus carrot two right the factor multiplying n minus display style n underscore is the sign of angle of the incident ray with the x-axis, and the factor multiplying n plus display style n underscore plus is the sign of angle of the refracted ray with the x-axis. Snell's law for refraction requires that these terms be equal. As this calculation demonstrates, Snell's law is equivalent to vanishing of the first variation of the optical path length. Topic: <laughs> Fermat's principle in 3 dimensions. It is expedient to use vector notation. Let x equals 
x 1 x 2 x 3 Display style x equals x underscore one, x underscore two, x underscore three. Let t be a parameter, let x t display style x t be the parametric representation of a curve C, and let x t display style dot x t be its tangent vector. The optical length of the curve is given by a c equals t equals t zero t one n x x x d t Display style a c equals int underscore t equals t underscore zero carrot t underscore one n x sqrt dot x c dot dot x dt. Note that this integral is invariant with respect to changes in the parametric representation of c. The Euler-Lagrange equations for a minimizing curve have the symmetric form d d t p equals x x n display style frac d dt p equals sqrt dot x c dot dot x nabla n where p equals n x x x x display style p equals frac n x dot x sqrt dot x c dot dot x it follows from the definition that p satisfies p p equals n x 2 display style p c dot p equals n x caret 2 Therefore, the integral may also be written as a c equals t equals t zero t one p x d t Display style a c equals int underscore t equals t underscore zero carrot t underscore one p c dot dot x dt. This form suggests that if we can find a function psi whose gradient is given by p, then the integral a is given by the difference of psi at the endpoints of the interval of integration. Thus the problem of studying the curves that make the integral stationary can be related to the study of the level surfaces of psi. In order to find such a function, we turn to the wave equation, which governs the propagation of light. This formalism is used in the context of Lagrangian optics and Hamiltonian optics. Topic. Connection with the wave equation. The wave equation for an inhomogeneous medium is U T T equals C two U display style U underscore T T equals C carrot two nabla C D O T nabla U where c is the velocity, which generally depends upon x-wave fronts for light are characteristic surfaces for this partial differential equation, they satisfy phi t 2 equals c x 2 phi phi Display style buffy underscore t carrot two equals c x carrot two nabla buffy c dot nabla buffy, 
we may look for solutions in the form phi t x equals t minus psi x display style phi t x equals t psi x in that case psi satisfies psi psi equals n 2 display style nabla psi c dot nabla psi equals n caret 2 where n equals 1 c display style n equals 1 c according to the theory of first order partial differential equations if p equals psi display style p equals nabla psi then p satisfies d p d s equals n n display style frac dp ds equals n nabla n along a system of curves the light rays that are given by d x d s equals p display style frac dx ds equals p these equations for solution of a first order partial differential equation are identical to the Euler Lagrange equations if we make the identification d s d t equals x x n display style frac ds dt equals frac sqrt dot x c dot dot x n we conclude that the function psi is the value of the minimizing integral or as a function of the upper end point that is when a family of minimizing curves is constructed the values of the optical length satisfy the characteristic equation corresponding the wave equation Hence, solving the associated partial differential equation of first order is equivalent to finding families of solutions of the variational problem. This is the essential content of the Hamilton-Jacobi theory, which applies to more general variational problems. Topic: <laughs> Action principle In classical mechanics, the action S is defined as the time integral of the Lagrangian. L the Lagrangian is the difference of energies. L equals t minus u. Display style L equals t u, where t is the kinetic energy of a mechanical system and u its potential energy. Hamilton's principle or the action principle states that the motion of a conservative holonomic integrable constraints mechanical system is such that the action integral s equals t equals t 0 t 1 l x x t D T display style s equals int underscore t equals t underscore zero carrot t underscore one l x dot x t d t is stationary with respect to variations in the path x t. The Euler Lagrange equations for this system are known as Lagrange's equations. D D T L x equals l x display style frac d dt frac partial l partial dot x equals frac partial l partial x and they are equivalent to newton's equations of motion for such systems the conjugate momenta p are defined by p equals 
l x display style p equals frac partial l partial dot x for example if t equals 1 2 m x 2 display style t equals frac 1 2 m dot x caret 2 then p equals m x display style p equals m dot x hamiltonian mechanics results if the conjugate momenta are introduced in place of x display style dot x by a legendre transformation of the Lagrangian L into the Hamiltonian H defined by H x P T equals P x minus L x x T Display style h x p t equals p dot x l x dot x t. The Hamiltonian is the total energy of the system. H equals t plus u. Analogy with Fermat's principle suggests that solutions of Lagrange's equations, the particle trajectories, may be described in terms of level surfaces of some function of x. This function is a solution of the Hamilton-Jacobi equation. Psi T plus H X Psi X T equals zero. Display style frac partial psi partial t plus h left x frac partial psi partial x t right equals zero. Topic: Variations and sufficient condition for a minimum. Calculus of variations is concerned with variations of functionals, which are small changes in the functional's value due to small changes in the function that is its argument. The first variation is defined as the linear part of the change in the functional, and the second variation is defined as the quadratic part. For example, if j y is a functional with the function y. Topic y x as its argument, and there is a small change in its argument from y to y plus h, where h h x is a function in the same function space as y. Then the corresponding change in the functional is delta j h equals j y plus h minus j y display style delta j h equals j y plus h j y the functional j y is said to be differentiable if delta J H equals Phi H plus Epsilon H Display style Delta J H equals Va Phi H plus Var Epsilon H where Phi H is a linear functional H is the norm of H and Epsilon zero is H zero. The linear functional phi h is the first variation of j y and is denoted by delta j h equals phi h display style delta j h equals va phi h. The functional j y is said to be twice differentiable if delta j h equals phi 1 h plus phi 
two H plus epsilon H two Display style delta j h equals vafi underscore one h plus vafi underscore two h plus var epsilon h carrot two, where phi one h is a linear functional, the first variation phi two h is a quadratic functional, and epsilon zero is h zero. The quadratic functional phi two h is the second variation of j y and is denoted by delta 2 j h equals phi 2 h display style delta caret 2 j h equals vafi underscore 2 h the second variation delta 2 j h is said to be strongly positive if delta 2 J H K H two Display style delta carrot two J H G Q K H carrot two for all H and for some constant K greater than zero, using the above definitions, especially the definitions of first variation, second variation, and strongly positive, the following sufficient condition for a minimum of a functional can be stated. See also Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>